So we're at the start of 2021 and you're probably looking online, doing some Google searches to figure out what you may need to do or what the best thing is to lose weight and to get in shape this year. But throughout the fitness industry, there's a lot of information that is incorrect and it can be very overwhelming when you first look online and you may not be able to know what's right and what isn't right. So in today's video, I'm going over 10 different fitness myths that you'll see online and giving you a straight answer on why you shouldn't believe them. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Aaron from Amphi Coaching and today we're going over 10 different fitness myths you may believe, but I'm gonna give you straight answers today on why you should not believe them. And if you're new here, if you're new to my channel, my name is Aaron. I'm an online fat loss coach. I help people lose weight and get strong. I usually average about one video a week, but I did take a bit of a break, a little hiatus over the holidays to give myself a bit of a vacation and some time off because the past year was a little hectic. So if you want to catch up on things, my last video, I'll link it up there, was on BCAA supplements and if you should take them. And if you're watching this video and you want to keep getting updates for future videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Also, if you're one of those people starting your fitness journey this year, make sure to subscribe so you get an update for my next video because I'm going to be going over three things that you need to be doing that will help you stay on top of your goals this year because I often see a lot of people fall off track within the first few weeks. But if you want a preview for that, I do have a podcast called Mindful Fitness on iTunes. Link is in the description if you want to listen to that episode. So with that out of the way, let's go over the 10 fitness myths you shouldn't believe. In order to keep this video on the shorter side, I'm not going to go super in detail on all of these topics or else this video would be 30 or 60 minutes long. So I'm gonna give you a straight to the point answer. So that way it's quick and easy. And each answer will probably be about a minute, but if at any point you do want to see a whole video on any of the topics that I bring up, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get a video made for that. So number one, our first fitness myth is muscle toning. A lot of people, when they first get into the gym or lifting weights, they want to tone their muscles. But as a matter of fact, muscle toning isn't a thing. You can't shape the look of your muscles and you can't just tone your body. Toning in essence is losing fat and building muscle. So you see more muscle shape from losing the fat and building some muscle. So you can't specifically tone. There are no exercises that will tone your muscles. There isn't a diet that will tone your muscles. In order to have a toned look, you do need to spend some time building some muscle and also some time losing some weight or losing some fat. Number two, lifting weights will make you bulky. Now, I find this one is fairly common with women when they're getting into lifting weights. A big fear is that if they start lifting weights, they're just going to get huge and turn into the Hulk or something. But our bodies aren't like that. We don't just get massive. Um, if you look at me, I've been lifting 10 years. I don't look like the Hulk whatsoever. And I've been lifting probably the majority of that time. So lifting weights will not make you bulky. You will build some muscle mass, but we don't build muscle that fast. Depending on your age, depending on your nutrition, the training you're doing, you may only build one pound of muscle a month, maybe half a pound of muscle a month. If you're younger, let's say you're 18, then maybe one to two. But honestly, you're not just going to get massive overnight. Even with years and years and years of training, you're not going to get huge. So don't get worried. You're not going to get super bulky or gigantic from lifting weights. And honestly, the majority of the results you do see in the gym is supported by your diet. So if you are in a deficit and you're trying to lose weight, you're not going to really build that much muscle or get really any bigger um, because you are losing weight. If however, you are eating in a surplus, over and over again and doing a lot of hypertrophy training, which is lifting weights to help your muscles grow, then you may get a little bulkier, but you're not gonna turn into the Hulk. But that diet change of eating in a surplus is going to be the primary driver for that. Number three, 
you should feel sore after a workout. I find this one is very common among beginners and being sore is not a good indicator of how effective your workout was. If you can barely walk the next day oh my God. You all right, boss? and you can't really do anything, you can't move around at the office, you can't do your job effectively, was your workout actually beneficial? No. You should be able to function day to day just fine. You may be sore, you may be stiff once in a while, but being sore is not an indicator of how good your workout was. As a general rule, if you did have a difficult workout, you may be sore for about two days after. If it's your first weight training workout in like months and months, especially like your first workout in the gym after quarantine, then you may be sore for a few days because it's a brand new stimulus. However, if you're used to weight training, you should only be sore for two, maybe a max of three days after your workout. Any longer, it is a good indication that maybe you're not recovering properly or you may have overtrained during that session. So just because you're sore, it does not mean you had a good workout. You can have super effective workouts with being perfectly fine after. So instead of focusing on being sore, focus on are you improving? Are you lifting more weights, doing more reps? Could you do one more set than last time? Can you go faster on the treadmill at a faster speed or for longer, things like that. Focus on things you can actually improve on instead of just how sore can I be after this workout. So number four, I only want to lose fat in a certain area. So you've probably seen a lot of advertising for workouts that will only get rid of fat in your abs or only fat in your arms or your thighs. But unfortunately, we can't target where we lose our fat. So everybody's body is different in this situation. Everyone's gonna lose fat at different rates and in different areas first. Some people, like myself, I usually lose fat in my legs first. Some people lose fat in their stomach first, some people in their back first, some people in their arms first. Everybody is different in this situation and if we could target our fat loss in certain areas, wouldn't you think most people would be walking around with six packs? If we could do that, then probably 99% of people would be walking around with six packs, but they'd have fat everywhere else. So unfortunately, you can't target where you lose weight. It's kind of a waiting game, unfortunately, but as you lose weight, you're gradually going to lose weight in the places that you want. Now, sometimes your hormonal profile can affect your fat distribution and where you hold a larger proportion of fat. So if you have a bit of a hormonal imbalance or body's going through changes, distribution of fat may change or you may notice you gain stomach fat faster compared to other areas. So if you do wanna see a video on the hormonal side of fat loss and fat gain, feel free to leave a comment below. Won't go into it in this video or else it's gonna get a little long. Number five, this is one that always grinds my gears to be honest. And the saying that carbs make you fat. And this is something that I've probably gone over <laughs> at least a hundred times, but to put it simply, carbs do not make you fat overeating in general, such as eating a surplus of calories, will make you gain weight. So it doesn't matter if a large proportion of your diet is carbohydrates, it's not the driving factor in weight loss and weight gain. The determining factor, if you're going to lose weight or gain weight, is if you're eating more calories than what your body needs, or less calories than what your body needs. So don't worry about carbs. Carbs are perfectly fine. Some people may not tolerate carbs as well. They may be a little bloated. If you're one of those people, you can eat a little less carbs. And I find some people will be like, oh, I cut out carbs in my diet and then I lost weight. But all I have to do is think through this logically. If you cut out carbs, what are you also doing? You're reducing a food group and you're also reducing your calories and you're stopping yourself from eating sugary foods that you're probably eating 
in the first place. So with that, you're naturally just allowing yourself to eat less food, which is going to help you lose weight. So don't be afraid of carbs. They're not the enemy. They're your body's primary energy source. So eat your carbs. You need them to work out so you can have more energy and lose more weight. So this brings us to number six, and that's eating after a certain time will make you gain weight. And this is something common I hear is that eating after eight will make you gain weight. Simply, no. It doesn't matter exactly when you eat. It doesn't matter if you eat most of your calories in the morning, middle of the day, or afternoon. Try to think of your calorie intake as a 24 hour period or like a 24 hour clock. As long as you're getting the calories that your body needs in that time, then you'll be perfectly fine. What happens usually is some people tend to overeat or snack a lot in the evening, such as like around the eight or 9 p.m. period before they go to bed. And what happens is it's that snacking, that overeating in that small window that puts them in a surplus, which causes them to gain weight or makes losing weight a lot harder. And what happens usually is when someone tells herself that I'm not going to eat past eight, they actually stop themselves from that evening snacking and that evening overeating. So that restriction just helps them eat a little bit less, but it's not a factor of eating at a certain time, which is causing the weight loss. It's just a matter of restructuring your eating windows. And if eating after 8 p.m. did cause you to gain weight, wouldn't everybody that works in overnight shift be severely overweight? And I'm pretty sure that's not the case. So don't be worried about when you eat. As long as you get all of your calories in during the day, at some point, you'll be perfectly fine. It doesn't matter if it's more in the afternoon or more in the morning. Okay, number seven. And then this one is sweating more means you had a better workout. So this is similar to the being sore after a workout means you had a better workout. This one, I hear often that you need to get a good sweat going to have a good workout. And simply not everybody is a big sweater and some people just sweat more than the average person. So getting your sweat on, it's a good thing to get sweaty. It makes you feel like you're working hard, but it's not an indicator of if you had a good workout or not. For example, let's say if you're a competitive power lifter and you're getting ready for a meet, you're probably not going to be sweating doing like singles or doubles and taking five, 10 minutes of rest time between your lifts. But those workouts are super effective in terms of achieving their goal. So you do not need to be sweaty after a workout to have a good workout. I also used to have a client who would just sweat a lot. Like it could be minus 20 Celsius. He could step outside and he'll be sweating. So some people just sweat more than other people. So if you're using sweating as a factor of a quality of workout, him just stepping outside would be a good workout. But obviously, we both know that's not a good workout, just stepping outside. So don't use sweating as an indicator of a good workout. It will sometimes make you feel like you're working harder, which is great, but just because you got a little sweaty does not mean you had an effective workout. So we're almost at the end. This is number eight, and that is ab workouts will give you abs. Well, unfortunately, just like the one on where you can't target your fat loss, doing a bunch of sit-ups will not give you a six pack. So getting abs is primarily just losing weight, losing fat. It is a bit of a waiting game, unfortunately. And all it is is getting to a low enough body fat where you can see your abs. But everybody does have abs underneath our stomach fat. There are abdominal muscles there there weren't, then we probably wouldn't be able to stand up. So everybody does have abs. They're just under some fat. So they may not always be visible. You can, on one hand, build your abs a little bit. So they can grow a little bit. So they may like pop out a little more, but that's only really going to be visible if you're already lean enough to basically see your abs already. So they're not going to just grow like your biceps do. They 
may get like I don't know, a fraction of a percent bigger, but it's not going to be that much. And the shape of your abs is largely a genetic thing. You can cause some growth, but it is primarily genetic. Some people have like two packs, some people have a six pack, some people have a 12 pack, um, some people have more developed obliques than others, and it's largely genetic. There isn't that much you can do about it, but doing sit-ups all day or every day will not get you some abs. If you do see someone be like, oh, I did 100 sit-ups a day for a month and I got a six pack, they were also probably doing a lot of other training as well. And they were probably also fairly strict on their diet, which allowed them to lose some body fat to see their abs a little more. So our ninth myth is, will my fat turn into muscle or won't my fat just turn into muscle? This is something that I've heard before. It's not uncommon and to put this very simply, your fat can't turn into muscle or vice versa. They're two different cells. It would be just like saying your skin can turn into muscle. Two very different cells. They can't just morph. We're not like anamorphs. Um, we can't just morph into a whole other piece of tissue. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So if you're lifting weights, your fat won't turn into muscle. I feel like this one is fairly common with beginners um, or people who are fairly inexperienced with lifting weights. This is something that I do here occasionally. So if you do come across it or if you are someone that thought this was a thing, nope, you can't turn your muscle or you can't turn your fat into muscle or if you wanted to turn your muscle into fat for some reason, but unfortunately that's not a thing. If we could, then we'd all be jacked and that would be great. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And this brings us to our 10th and final myth that I don't want you bringing into 2021. And that is the blank diet is the best diet for losing weight. And I feel like this one is it's more common than I would like it to be. And it's something that I always see on like Facebook groups or different Instagram posts, someone promoting like the keto diet or intermittent fasting or what have you, that this diet is the best diet for losing weight. But to be completely transparent and honest with you, the exact diet you follow doesn't really matter. There is no best diet to lose weight. The best thing that will get you to lose weight is the diet that's easier for you to follow. It's a diet that gets you in a caloric deficit. It's a diet that you feel good on, you have lots of energy, you feel full. Um, it's a diet where you can work out a lot, you have lots of energy. So for everybody, that's going to be something different. For some people, following a keto diet following that structure and restricting themselves of a lot of different foods. Some, for some people it helps. For myself, I know if I did that diet, I would be miserable and I would hate my life. So for me, it would not be the best diet. Same for say intermittent fasting. For some people, that eating window of restricting when they can eat is a huge help. And for others, eating throughout the day is a little bit better. So ultimately it's dependent on your situation. It depends on your food preferences, your daily schedule, your workout routine, um, your work routine, if you work a physical job or a desk job. So there is no best diet. So if you see an ad online for like this diet will guarantee you to lose weight or this diet is the best diet to get you to lose weight. It's not true. It may be the best for somebody else, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for you. So unfortunately, it does come down to a little bit of trial and error with figuring out what works best for you, but trying different things here and there will take a bit of work, but it will allow you to find what is the easiest for you to maintain and to have enough energy to feel good, to feel happy, and to also lose weight. So that brings us to the end of the video. So those were the 10 fitness myths that you 
Maybelline right now, but hopefully you don't. If there's any in particular out of the 10 that you do want me to cover in greater detail or do a whole separate video on, I'm happy to and just leave a comment down below and I can get that made. So if you wanna keep seeing videos like this throughout this year, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I appreciate all of you for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.